I'm gonna take this old fry boot that I found at a local thrift store and turn it into a wallet. So the first thing I need to do is remove the sole of the boot so that we have nothing but leather to work with, so it's easier to work with, and so that we can lay it flat. And I'm doing this just by cutting around the sole and basically ripping off the top of the boot. Now that we got the sole removed, I'm gonna start unstitching the boot. We don't wanna unstitch the entire boot so that we can have some bigger pieces to work with, but we wanna unstitch it enough that we can lay it pretty flat. And now I'm removing the pigskin liner inside the boot. It's just glued in there and kind of stitched, so it's pretty easy to rip out and pop some of the stitches and pull it apart. And then I'm removing the heel support and laying it flat so that we can start tracing out the pattern. And this pattern's available through the link below. This is actually a follow-up video for a video that me and my buddy Schmood made on his channel where he made a wallet from the other boot and he used tools that you can find floating around your house or in any household. So, but for this video, I'm using all the professional tools to kind of show a little contrast of what the difference is between using professional tools versus around the house tools. He actually used a fork to punch his holes and a box cutter and a bunch of other, like just random stuff to make his wallet. And now I'm just cutting out all the different contours and cutting out the second piece of the template so that I can trace it on the other side of the boot. And now on this boot, I, I noticed a little marking here from the, the, the Fry logo. So I wanna use that in the actual wallet itself. So I'm gonna trace around the template so that that lines up perfectly. So when the, when the wallet's all stitched up, you'll be able to see that logo. And then I'm punching all the holes out for the stitching. And then I punched little holes throughout the contours to make it easier to cut those half circles. And now that I've got both of the pieces rough cut, I'm gonna scratch up the surface before I glue it so that the glue will adhere better. And the glue is just there so that I, when I go to punch the holes that the leather doesn't slide around and make the holes misaligned. And now before I glue the other side, I'm gonna remove that little slot for the thumb slider by using my half round punch and cutting the straight pieces with my knife. And then I'm applying some glue to the back side of the piece, spreading it around, and then gluing the two pieces together. While that dries, I cut out the other thumb slot. And now I'm using my stitch marking tool. And now I will use my round stitching punch to punch out all the stitching holes so that we can get a nice even stitch around the entire thing. And now that the holes are all punched, we can just double check that it's all lined up and everything's gonna stitch together smoothly. And now we're going to move to the stitching. So I'm gonna use this braided polyester thread. It's a Ritza thread. Then I'm gonna use a saddle stitching technique. And if you're not sure how to do that, I just posted a video last week on how to do that. And I'll include that in the description below. Cause we're just gonna kind of breeze over this real quickly and not do an actual how to of how to stitch. So as I'm stitching the wallet together, I'm just double checking every couple stitches that the thread is tight and that I have the template or I have the wallet all lined up correctly so that I don't miss a hole and completely misstitch the entire thing. And then I'm gonna cut the threads and burn them and push them down in the wallet and get ready for finishing the edges. Now that it's all stitched together, I, I'll take my corner punch and just round off those corners. And I, I like to do this after it's stitched because I know that when I use that corner punch, it's gonna punch it equally on all three layers. And then I take my lighter and singe off any of the long fibers and any of the loose thread that's hanging off from the boot stitching. And now I'm ready for finishing the edges. And I'm gonna take some gum tragacanth, 
which is a slicking compound and my hand burnisher and just start going to work on it. This leather's kind of a different leather because it's boot leather so it doesn't burnish quite as easily but after the first pass I go over it with my edging tool and kind of take off those sharp corners so that it finishes the edges really nicely without it mushrooming out too bad. And then I moved to my second coat of burnishing and off screen here I, I went and got some beeswax and put a layer of beeswax on there and burnished it as well. I just didn't uh, push record when I was doing that layer. And now the edges are nice and finished up and we are done with the wallet. I think it turned out really good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And if you'd like to see Brian's version, I'll put a link in the description to the video that me and him did together so that you can see how he did and the wallet I made from the Shell Cordovan. Here's a quick shot of the three wallets that we did. The first one in the Shell Cordovan from Horween, the second that Brian made, and the one I just made in this video.